So today I'm going to go over my focus settings for the Fuji X-H2. I talked about these a little bit in some previous videos. This is just about what I think are the best focus settings for the Fuji X-H2, specifically for shooting weddings, but I do actually use this setup for 99% of stuff now. This is part of a larger series of videos that are focusing on different elements of the X-H2, so if you do have any questions, let me know below, or if there's something that I've missed, or you have something you want to know, then yeah, pop me a question and I'll do my best to make a video about it. So here's how I have my camera set up for most of the work that I do. So if you want to follow along with your camera, that's probably the easiest way of doing it. I've not found a nice setup to record the back of the camera yet, so I'm just going to talk through it. Uh, so first of all, you want to make sure that you're in one of the photo shooting modes on the button here, so the PSAM or the pre-programmed C options if you want. Um, just make sure you're not in video because that does give you a different menu setup um, when you go into the menu. So I'm going to be going through this section of the menu, which is the autofocus. So it's the second one down, so it's the AF, MF. So focus area, I go for a middle spot. Spot, um, focus so yeah right in the middle of the camera I tend to choose like a medium size um, that works better the small one again a bit too small the big ones a bit too big go for a medium but play around with what works for you uh, then scrolling down to the actual focus mode I go down to AFC so that's continuous focus so whatever that square is put on it will keep in focus as you move or it moves then on to the AF mode so then I go down to wide tracking and that's what's going to allow that middle point to move around the camera and just track so in, in terms of what that looks like I'll, I'll try and show you you basically lock on a spot and it will just kind of follow that around um, and it doesn't matter if you come in closer or move further out it basically just keeps it locked into that spot that's really what I'm looking for that's the kind of setup so that's doing the center focus point AFC and then wide tracking and then that'll allow you to do that. Um, you can go into the AFC custom settings and tweak how quick it is and some other various things. I just keep it on the first setting which is the general purpose setting. You can change it for other things like if you're shooting with like a fast sports car or something like that but the general works fine for me. Um, it's plenty quick enough and and it does what I want to do. The one thing it can't do is it can't track a subject going off the, off the screen and then coming back on. I mean, you'll need to sort of recapture that if the person does go off the screen or the subject goes off. I'm not sure if that's something that's gonna get updated. Um, I'm not even sure if it's something that cameras are capable of, but we'll see. It probably will be in the future if it's not now. Uh, the autofocus point display is off, so that's where it shows you all of the focus points across the frame. That just gets in the way. I keep it in the middle anyway, so I don't need to know where else it could be. Um, and the pre-autofocus is also off as well. Again, given the way that I shoot, I just don't need it, and that pre-autofocus will use the battery. So yeah, for me, I'm seeing something happen. I'm putting that focus point up, I'm half pressing, and then that's keeping locked as I'm shooting. So if I'm moving around, as I say, or they're moving, um, everything's just staying in focus as long as I'm half pressed on that shutter um, and shooting. Face detection is something I'll turn on and off depending on how I'm feeling. If I do have it, I'll have it on eye auto, so then it's grabbing someone's face and it's going to the eye. The thing that I find that it can do sometimes is it can go, oh, there's a face there, but I'm like, well, no, I don't want that face. I want the one that's slightly in front or I want a specific one or I'm trying to do something, you know, slightly different. So yeah, I sort of have it on and off depending on, you know, depending on sort of how I feel. If I had to choose one of the ways, I would always have it off. And that's pretty much the settings. So if you've done it right, you should be able to see that focus frame on the camera itself. And then when you half press, it should go green and then it should stay locked to whatever you uh, whatever you're shooting if you can't see the frame then check your display settings sometimes it's in custom setting that you might have that turned off with mine i have custom settings I have a few things on the camera depending on how i'm shooting but yeah make sure that that's on that focus frame is, is on and then you'll be able to see it and then so how that actually works for a wedding day um as i say so you you have that focus frame in the middle you have press the button on your subject matter and it will track that doesn't matter if that thing's moving forward or away from you or if it's moving side to side it's very very useful when shooting with some of the wide open lenses as well what I found with the focus and recompose method, so say something with the, with the 56 1.2, the focal plane is so thin that you could focus on someone who's sort of here, recompose like that, and you've actually changed the focal plane enough to change the focus. Um, with this, that kind of avoids that because it's adjusting that as you move across. It's also very useful, you know, if you're seeing something going on and you're taking some photos and you're like, you know what, this would be better two steps forward. You can just move those two steps forward, keep that button half pressed and still keep shooting rather than have to refine the personal refined what you're looking for to shoot. It can work quite well to grab that focus of, say, the person you want to shoot um, and then bring the camera down while still pointing at them so you know that they're still in that frame. And then when they do the thing that they want, if they're laughing at a joke or something like that, you can grab a few shots like that so you can be quite subtle with it. Or you can then bring it back up to your eye and get the exact um, framing that you want. That method pairs quite well with the 40 megapixel shooting. If anything, I'm shooting slightly wider than I need to shoot. Um, so then, you know, if I am trying to shoot from the hip or trying to do some sort of more fast stuff, particularly if I'm not looking through the viewfinder, most of the time I'll cock the camera sort of that way because I'm right-handed so the horizon line will be 
scoop down to the side. So having a bit of extra framing, a bit of extra croppability means I can strain it up. I can come zoom in a little bit, not lose any quality and get the exact sort of framing that I want. As much as possible, I try and get it right in the camera, but um, you know, I mean, it's, it's a wedding, stuff's moving really quickly. So I don't wanna be worrying too much about straight horizon lines and things like that that can all be fixed afterwards. Yeah, for uh, things like confetti shots and things like that, it works really, really well. So, you know, the couple are coming out of the church or out of a building down that confetti line, just grab focus on the groom or the bride. And then it doesn't matter sort of you can frame up you just know that it's going to be in focus the whole time just on them it's also quite nice because you can shoot 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 like this and then move the camera around like that and then carry on shooting holding that half press on the shutter button this whole time as long as they don't the subject matter doesn't go out of the frame so as long as you're still pointing towards it it will track it's kind of a nice way of shooting some landscape photos shooting some portrait photos and then just keeping that focus the entire time yeah it works very well i shoot about 10 frames a second for that moment um, and it pretty much hits every single time that's pretty much it that's how i have it set up um, most of the time the only real time i'll change it out of that mode is if i'm shooting dance floor photos which i might do a manual depending on how much light there is it will struggle to do that mode in in, in darker light it's not impossible but as with any focus it just gets more challenging when it's dark yeah so for me this is a very fast very reactive way of shooting with the xh2 um, works very, very well for weddings and fast-paced things. But yeah, give those settings a go. If you do want any more information on the actual specific settings, I'll try and put it in the comments or just ask me some questions if you have anything. Once I've figured out a nice setup for recording the back of the camera so I can show you what it looks like in real life, I'll try and do that. But I need to have a think about how I'm going to do that. If you've got any ideas, let me know. Yep, yeah, that's how I set up my Fujifilm X-H2 to photograph weddings. That's how the focus works for me. So yeah, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.